And we have something in our possession. Each and every one of us pretty much have one. It may be laying around collecting dust, but we all have one that is full of love letters written to His children, written to those who believe in Him, to encourage them and say, You are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loves you and gave His life a sacrifice for you and for me. The reason we heard is because that's kind of where it stays. We have no strength, we have no power because we haven't opened up what has the power to save, what has the power to give us strength and healing in our hearts and in our lives. I'm going to ask those guys that I got with earlier, if they would, if they would go back there to Dan. Jason, if you would, get back there with Dan and and we're going to grab some booklets. We've done something a little different than usual for this series. and, And what I want this to do is hopefully to generate unity among us, but also to go ahead and get our minds and our hearts in tune with what God wants to say to us throughout the week. So next Sunday when you come here, You're already experiencing what God's speaking to your heart and your life. So this is a devotional book that we want you guys to have. We're not expecting anything for this. This is something we want to give you that I pray would change your heart and your life forever. That you would experience healing in your heart and life from God through the hurt and pain that each and every one of us have experienced. Now, I will go ahead and say this. There is one typo. Well, there's two. There's one when you open the page where there's a little bit few too many spaces, but then there's one, I believe, that says during week one, all of a sudden you'll hit a week three, day four or five. Um, That's actually in the right place. It is week one, or it's, I'm sorry, week two, and uh, it is the right day for that week, so it's just a typo, but um, we want you guys to have those, please. I I understand that there's probably some of the questions that are going to be in there, There may not be necessarily enough lines to write the answer that you have. So by all means, grab yourself a journal. Grab yourself a piece of, you know, a a notebook and and put that thing right there beside you. And as you read these scriptures, as, as God's word starts to pour into your heart and you start answering these questions, my heart's desire is that you open yourself up to the healing that God has for you. That's the purpose of this, and and nobody else is, I'm not going to ask for these books back so I can see your answers. This is so that you can jot down the hurt that you're feeling. Answer these questions honestly before a holy God, so that you can get them out there in the open, because for a lot of us, we've held on to this bitterness and this hurt, and we've never described it, we've never explained it to anyone, not even God himself. We haven't brought it to him and said, God, I need healing from you. So this is something maybe that will just trigger that openness in your heart and life to just be honest with yourself and be honest with God and maybe get honest with others about the hurt that's in your life that you're facing, whatever it may be. So I encourage you to take the time during the week and this is going to be a four-part series and this is the first week that we're going through this. So we'll be going through this series throughout the month of September all the way up until our Compassion Sunday at the end of September. So um, just wanted to kind of make you aware of that. All of us, each and every one of us, have faced hurt at some point in our lives. Whether it be physical pain and physical hurt, or whether it be someone who has wronged us, someone who who has hurt us emotionally. And for some of us, even at times, and we're going to see that, we've even at times put the blame on God and we've been hurt by Him. It happens. And we're going to see that this morning through some of the Scripture that we read this morning. There's there's hurt. Each and every one of us have gone through some type of pain and some type of hurt in our lives. Most of us have been done wrong by others. Most of us have felt like someone has stabbed us in the back or we've, you know... Maybe we purchased a new vehicle and we felt like we really got ripped off. 
you know, that somebody really did us wrong. They really stuck it to us. All of us have faced those types of things where we've felt wrong, like someone took advantage of us. We're going to see a couple of stories this morning, and and I'll probably even throw in a a paraphrase of a third, just to kind of get us started on this hurt. And if you've got your booklets, you you can see kind of in there that it, it says that, you know, or up here on the screen, hurt. Hurt. Well, what is that acronym, H-U-R-T? What has that got to do with anything? Hurt uniquely replaced by trust. Hurt uniquely replaced by trust. See, what happens to us in a, in a situation where, where we have been hurt or been damaged or, or emotionally uh, hurt and wronged, the thing that we don't want to do is trust. Usually, the very first thing that comes up, if someone's wronged me or stabbed me in the back, what do I do? I build up a wall. I'm not going to let anybody else in that far, that deep into my heart and into my life, into my emotions, to allow anybody else for the rest of my life to get that deep into me, to be able to do that to me. So we don't ever want to trust anybody. But God is saying, what I want to do is you uniquely trust me. I want to replace the hurt in your life by trust in me. The thing that you don't want to do, I want to get you to do. I want you to trust somebody, but not just somebody. I want you to trust me and let me replace and heal the hurt in your life. So that's what we're going to be going through for the next four weeks. If you've got your Bibles or if you don't, you can look up here on the screen. We're going to be in Luke chapter 8. Luke in chapter 8, verses 43 through 48. And this is probably a very familiar verse of Scripture for for those that have been around for a while, um, who've read their Bibles or or been in church for most of their life. They've heard this story at one point or time or another. And this is the woman who had an issue of blood. We'll start there in verses 43. Of chapter 8. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, and she could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe. Immediately the bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it, and Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you, but Jesus said, But Jesus said, This um Someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out of me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now, I'm sure that you got to understand, this woman had been dealing with this issue in her life, this bleeding, this constant physical problem in her life for 12 years. So I'm sure without any doubt, there's no doubt in my mind that she had tried everything. She had tried everything. I mean, you don't just stick around with something that's wrong with you for 12 years and you haven't tried something that's going to take care of this problem. So I'm sure this woman was at the end of herself, but so no doubt she had tried everything, but she heard. She heard about this this guy that wasn't like an ordinary guy that was coming her way. And she found out about this guy, this this man named named Jesus. And all of these miracles and all of these things that he had done. And she had faith. God had placed something in her heart and in her life that said, You've been dealing this, dealing with this issue for 12 years. I want to make it clean. So all you got to do is go up and touch. She, she knew she had the faith that if this guy is who he says he is, if this guy really has this much power to heal... 
Man, all I got to do is get close enough to him and just touch the fringe of his clothes and I'll be healed. Jesus knew what was going on and he stopped the crowd. I mean, yeah, everybody else, you, you saw what the disciples said. He's like, Jesus, you know, there's a crowd following you and there's a bunch of people bumping into you. So, you know, for you to ask who touched me, that's kind of crazy. And he's like, no, 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 no. Someone, someone touched me and had faith. And I felt power releasing from me, healing power releasing from me that healed this person. This is different. This is not just somebody bumping into me because they want to be around somebody who can heal. This is somebody who had faith that I would heal them. This woman had hurt for 12 years. And she ran into a man named Jesus Christ. That's what we are. You're not here by accident. The hurt in your life that you've been dealing with, that you've been holding on to for years and years and years in your life, or maybe it's something new in your life that you're just now dealing with, that you're faced with, guess what? You're not here by accident. I want to introduce you to a man. And he's not like any ordinary man. And he's the kind of man that you need to put your faith and your put your trust in because he is the one who can save. He is the one who can heal. And that's the kind of faith that this woman had. But a lot of times the reason we have no faith is because we haven't established our faith. We haven't built up our faith because we haven't read who God is. We don't even know the character and the love of God and the power that is in Him. Because we rely on the preachers on Sunday morning to tell us who Jesus is instead of taking it our own selves and spending time with God on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, and saying, God, I want to hear from you. You have something specifically for me. I don't have to depend on that preacher every Sunday to tell me who you are. God, you want to tell me who you are. God, you want to heal this problem, this issue in my life. And God, I need to run into the healer. I need a collision. I need to be on a collision course with the healer. So his name is Jesus Christ. How does he have the power to heal? Because he is God's son. He is given all power and all authority to heal. Because he's God's son. Because He's God in the flesh, brought down to this world to save us, to pay the price for our sins. And He hung there and died on the cross for you and for me. That's how He loves us so much. That's why He loves us so much. He established and displayed His love for us by dying on the cross for us and taking our sin penalty. And if healing people wasn't enough to establish the power that he had while he walked this earth. After he cried out, it's accomplished. Three days later, he got up. That's why I can trust him. That's why I know that he has the strength and the power and the might to heal my hurt. Whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whatever it is, if I've been holding on to it for far too long, it's time that I collide with the healer, Jesus Christ, and give it over to Him. The faith that she had, we see that if I just touch the fringe of His robe, I know I'll be healed. I'll be healed. But see, we go to Him and we ask so flippantly because we haven't, time, we haven't spent time with Him. And I'm not saying, okay, here's the thing, here's the issue. Get a hold of this, okay? This didn't happen the first year. She didn't run into Jesus Christ 12 years ago. She held on to this issue of bleeding for 12 years. There was a purpose and a plan through all of this. She obviously had to go through this for 12 years. Some of us don't want to accept that. 
But for some reason, a lot of the time, why it takes 12 years is because we never, we never run into Jesus. We never hear about Jesus. We never accept the healing that comes from Him. He can take it away. He may choose not to. He may choose to let you go through that for just a little bit longer. But He's saying, trust me. Trust me. It's like the song that we were singing. Those words that we're singing are not just words that somebody, you know, some songwriter come up with, you know, just out of their head, out of their mind. No, these are words that come from God. He does all things for my good. He stays the same through the ages. His love never fails. These aren't words from just some songwriter. These are words from God's Word. These are, these are words that are for each and every one of us. I mean, you know, we think, oh my goodness, those are such powerful words. I can't believe this songwriter wrote such a beautiful song. Yeah, they pinned them down and they wrote them, but you know where they got them? From Scripture. That's the importance of what we need to understand, that there's Scripture here. There's love letters from God that He wants to do the work in us that only He can accomplish. And when you read His Word, sometimes, yes, it cuts like a knife, but it removes those things that He desires to get rid of in our life. But for some of us, it's healing that takes place, that we need, that encouragement, that strength that we need to keep going. That's who He is. John chapter 11, verses 30 through 44. says this, Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha met Him when the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily They assumed she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep, so they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and, and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him and he was deeply troubled. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him. But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb. A cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha The dead man's sister protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a head cloth. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. See, what you got to understand is Lazarus was a close friend to Jesus. He was, he was a close friend of Jesus. That's why you see, you know, That's one of the easiest scriptures to memorize. The shortest verse in all the Bible, Jesus wept. He wept. This was a close friend to him. And he wept. And and here's the thing. You you see Mary and Martha looking at the situation and and it being grim. And, And they had sent, I mean... People were sending out for Jesus to come to heal Lazarus. Jesus is out busy healing other people and sharing with the crowds. And all of a sudden these people come up and say, Hey, Lazarus, your friend is sick. You need to come quick. But Jesus tarried. Jesus postponed his answer. 
And we look at that and we're like, how in the world and why in the world would Jesus do something so cruel? Why would Jesus do something like that? Why would he postpone coming to help and heal his friend for a greater purpose? For a greater purpose. So Jesus was sent for and he postponed his entrance. As he gets there, the sisters come crying and they both basically say the same thing. Lord, if you'd have been here, our brother would not have died. One of the sisters, though, she had faith. She said, God, I know, Jesus, I know that all power is given to you. And and you could speak the words and he would come back to life. But the other one was just grieved and, and grief was so heavy in her heart that she she was just saying, God, I, Jesus, I can't believe that you didn't show up. I can't believe you, you just showed up too late. I can't believe you would treat your friend this way. Hello? How often have we said that? How often have we been in situations where we felt like we've been wronged? This is what I'm talking about. This, when, we, when I talk about hurt, when I talk about being hurt by God... It's not that God intended to hurt us. It's that we're taking it the wrong way. We don't understand. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He wants to perform something greater in your life, in my life. The question, the age-old question is, why do bad things happen to good people? Why does anything good happen to us? Because we're all sinners bound for a destiny in hell. But God, in His love and mercy towards us, sent Jesus Christ, His Son, to die on the cross for us. So why does anything good happen to us? We deserve hell. But God's love and the demonstration of His love through Jesus Christ has saved us and given us strength and power, and through Him, we have healing. We look at it all the time, and, and we've, we've given out the book before Crazy Love, and there's a story in that book about, a, I think it's a 14-year-old girl that dies, and she felt it in her heart that, that God was going to do something amazing and great in her life. And she just knew that God was going to do something great and amazing, but her life was cut short. We would say her life was cut short at 14 years old. But because of her testimony that she had with her classmates, with her friends, her neighborhood, people from all over came to her funeral. And I'm trying to remember, it was like, what, 2,000? 2,000 people came to Christ that day. And we look at that and say, how could God do that? Why wouldn't He do that? She already had a relationship with her Lord and Savior. She was ready to die. She was ready to go. God used her for a great thing in her life. She knew God was going to do something great in her life. And He did. At 14 years old, she passed away. But the time she spent here, the dash in between the beginning date, her birth date, and her dying date, the death certificate, that was the time in between that she took to tell people about Jesus. And her testimony here on this earth meant more. And 2,000 people came to know Christ that day at her funeral So hey, why do bad things happen to good people? Because God has a greater purpose and His ways are not our ways. Why does anything good happen to us? We look at it as the negative thing that someone would lose their life at such a young age. Why? Because where they're at, guess what? They have met the healer. There's no more pain. There's no more hurt. There's no more agony in their life. They're up there praising God forever, for all eternity. So God has a purpose for each and every one of us. 
Why is it that we look at this thing so negative? Why is it that we look at God as the one hurting us? No, God is trying to perform a greater purpose in your life. Just stay tuned. Stay tuned. I, I love that. You know, when you're, when you're in the middle of a movie, they always, you know, if you're not at the movie theater and you're watching it on TV, it's like at the very climatic part of it, they skipped a commercial. Or now all these reality shows, the results, you know, they always, you know, get the music going like they're fixing to announce the results of the, the contest or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Jesus is saying that to you this morning. Stay tuned. I'm going to be right back. Don't go away. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Don't lose trust. I'm still here. I want to walk with you through this. Mary and Martha, they didn't understand. All they could do was grieve. Why would you do this? Jesus, this was your friend. Why would you do this? <laughs> Jesus wept. And he said, show me where he's at. Take me to where he's at. Even then they didn't understand. They figured, oh, okay, he's going to go there and he's going to weep with the rest of us. He's going to grieve like the rest of us. He's going to hurt like the rest of us. Jesus hurt. There was pain in him. But he said, I've got something for these people. And he even cried it out to his father. He said, God, Father, I know you hear me. But I'm saying this out loud so they'll know. So that they will believe that you sent me. And he said, roll that stone away. And even then the people doubted, like, God, what, you know, Jesus, what are you going to do? This is nasty. He's been dead for four days. Surely by now he's, you know, rigor mortis has set in and he stinks. It's over. He's dead. Four days dead. He stinks. Jesus said, roll the stone away. And he cried out. Lazarus, come out. Come out. Now we've talked about the hurt that was in Mary and Martha's life. Imagine the emotional roller coaster that Lazarus was going for. I mean, surely he probably know, knew through his sickness that, hey, some people were sending out for Jesus. And he probably thought in his mind, all right, that's my buddy. That's my friend. Jesus is going to come. He's going to heal me. He's going to take care of me. Everything's going to be fine. I'm sure Lazarus there on his deathbed was like, what is he doing? I'm grasping for my last breath of air. Can you imagine the sweetest sound he heard? When he heard as that, ro that stone was rolled away, Lazarus, come out! And his ears were open and life flew into his body again as he breathed in and he heard Jesus speaking to him, calling his name, and life was given back to him. Lazarus, come out. <gasps> and he walked out of there, you know, just kind of hobbling out as he's wrapped up in his grave clothes. And he said, loose him and let him go. Turn him loose. He's got a story to tell now, boy. That's why. That is why, not only for Mary and Martha, but Lazarus too, you have a story to tell. When your life collides with the healer, guess what? You're going to have a story to tell. You're going to be able to experience and go through someone else's problems with them that you have faced the very same thing or something very, very close to the same thing that they're going through. And God has brought you out. And God has healed you through that. He hasn't done this and performed this in your life just so you can sit, sit there and do nothing. He's allowed you and purposed you to go through this so that you can tell somebody about the healer. Again, we live in this microwave age. We want it done right then. How many, I mean, think about the woman who had the issue of blood, this bleeding for 12 years. She had dealt with this for 12 years. I mean, Lazarus' sickness and Martha and Mary's grieving was not for that long. I mean, four days. 
I'm sure he was sick for a little while. It doesn't really tell us how long he was sick for. But I'm sure they had not dealt with it for 12 years. We're like that. We want it right now. God, heal me right now. God, touch me. Take this hurt away right now. Ask Job if it happens right now. Why do bad things happen to good people? Ask Job. I told you there'd be a third. This is the third. Job. Man, we we don't like to read Job. We we may, you know, some of us that that like to read Scripture, we may may get over there to that part of Job and we say, eh, I think I'll just kind of skip over that. Don't really like that part. A lot of negative stuff going on in Job's life. Purposeful stuff. Bad stuff was happening to Job. For a greater purpose. Job lost everything. Lost it all. I could not imagine being the pastor of this church and losing everything. And my wife basically sitting at home. And when I say losing everything, I mean like losing it all. He lost his servants. He lost his family, his kids. He had his wife and his so-called friends. To have your wife kind of back there and behind your head saying, Job, man, why don't you just curse God and die? Why don't you just go ahead and get this thing over with? Some of us have experienced that kind of depression in our life and hurt that has been so damaging in our lives that we do. We just want to call it quits. And Satan is back there behind us just saying, why don't you just curse God and die? Just give it up. Job said no. No. For a greater purpose. God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of you. And the hurt that you're facing and the hurt that you're dealing with in your life, He wants to heal, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional. I cannot tell you, I'm not, in any way can I tell you how God is going to heal you, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional. I can't tell you when it's going to happen. I can't really tell you how it's going to happen. But I can tell you who has the answers. And I can tell you where to find your answer. And where to find your hope. And who to put your trust in. Don't put your trust in me. Don't put your trust in those doctors. Don't put your trust in those things. All these things that we can hold on to. Yeah, we use wisdom if we're physically hurt. Yeah, we go to a doctor and see what's wrong with us. But when they don't have the answers, guess what? Why is it the last thing we do is come to the one who can heal us? It's like a last resort. Some people call it spare tire religion. You use God like a spare tire. I mean, when when life gets a flat, that's when I drag him out and say, God, here I am. Take care of this. I need some help. No. See, Job, Mary, Martha, Lazarus, others throughout Scripture, the woman with the bleeding for 12 years, God proved Himself to be on time. On time. When they thought he was too late, when Mary and Martha thought, oh God, she, you know, Jesus, you're too late. He's dead. He's been dead for four years. I mean, four days. He's been dead for four days. He stinks. Don't roll that stone away. Jesus is on time. On time in your life. When you've given up hope, 
Don't use him as your last resort, but if you're here and you are at the end of your rope and you feel like you're hanging by a thread, can I just tell you something? Let go. Let go and fall into the hand of Jesus because there's scripture that says no man can pluck us out of his hand. No man, nothing can take us out of his hand. God's always on time. Hurt. Being betrayed. Being done wrong. God's always on time. Always on time. There's one, the one, who can heal you. Jesus Christ. Set yourself for a collision course with the healer. And I pray that through this series, you begin to open yourself. You begin to open your heart of the bitterness and the pain that you've held on for far too long. And allow the healer to come in and heal you of that grief and pain and hurt. Whether it's physical, emotional, depression. Whatever it is that's hurt you, that's damaged you for years and years that we have held on for far too long. Release it to the healer. And in a few moments, I'm going to ask those that are going to come and and share an invitation song. And as we do that, we, we ask that you open your heart up and allow God to heal you and that He wants to take this hurt away. But I want you to understand that you can come up here and I can pray with you and some of these others can pray with you and you can get a dose of do better. And you can feel like God is helping you and God is healing you. But I promise you this, healing does not just happen overnight. If you've been damaged and hurt in your soul and in your heart and someone has done you wrong, then when you get up from here, yeah, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel like God's doing something in your life. But then when you get out there to work tomorrow morning or Tuesday... You get out there in that world and Satan comes knocking you up against your head and against your heart and he starts throwing all these thoughts in your mind and in your head and he says, why don't you just curse God and die? You know there ain't nothing, you know, nothing right with you. God hasn't done anything you, with you. You're still in the same shape. You're still in the same boat you were in yesterday or the day before. And he's going to do everything he can to attack you. You just remind him of his, where he's going to spend eternity. And that you're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to give in to this because I'm going to lay my burden down. I'm going to lay my hurt at the feet of Jesus. And I'm going to ask Him to heal me. So tomorrow, I'm not going to allow Satan to throw it back up in my head and pick that thing back up. I'm going to give it to Jesus. I'm going to continue to just give it to Jesus. God, I've let this thing go. You're going to have to help me. You're going to have to rebuke Satan and his attacks on my mind. And God, I'm still just going to continue to give this thing over to you. Continually. One day at a time. And allow the healer to heal your hurt. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this time and this opportunity that we've had. Lord, I pray that you would speak to hearts. That God, you would use the hurt in our lives to help us to understand that there is a greater purpose. God, you allow us to go through through things in our lives to, for your purpose, for, for a greater cause. Lord, you're at work to use us, to mold us and shape us into the fashion of your Son, Jesus Christ. And God, I pray that if there's someone here that does not have a relationship with Jesus, that God, they would understand and they have heard this morning what your son gave for us, that he gave his life to pay the penalty of sin for us, and that three days later he rose, and God, they can believe it in their heart and confess that you are who you say you are, that Jesus Christ is Lord of their life, and they will be saved. God, we give you praise for what you're doing, and God, what you're going to do through people's lives when they get on a collision course with the healer, that is you. In Jesus' name. Amen.